Thank you very much. Uh, this is a this is a very it needs a lot of uh, discussion about this one is there are uh, two many problems with this. This is the main there are three problems in cataract surgery. One is the the feeling of the dryness which is not keeping our patients happy. The second is the refractive outcome, not refractive outcomes, so the visual outcomes. So that's a completely different issue. You know. So coming to the dry eye, and uh, there are three types which we have problems in the uh, cataract. Uh, one is the aqueous deficiency, which is a serious condition, real dry eye is a uh, problem, and dysfunctional tear syndrome, where we don't see anything. We see a perfectly normal patient, and patient complains everything in the textbook or everything um, about the postoperatively, all the problems about the eye. The third one is the evaporative one, which needs a, a both it's a pathological and physiological. The first one and the third one, they need a prompt treatment preoperatively and postoperatively. Coming to the, uh, this, this is the main problem. Dysfunctional TTS, this is the, the dry eyes do not correlate well with the reported symptoms. What we see signs do not correlate. So, so the first thing is here, is it preoperative? Because most of us busy surgeons, we never see our patients preoperatively. Somebody else, when you see us and we operate and postoperatively, when he complains, he will come to our chamber. Or the steroids are the cause, or antibiotics, NSAID, surgical trauma incision, ocular surface. Which one is the main uh, culprit in this is the big issue. So it consists of this. This come is from the Alerga. This is a company one. This is not any scientific forum. This is a basically is developed by OSDA by Alerga. So that preoperatively you have an analysis where the patient is already is having this symptom. So it gives a clue that we can only say excuse. We can tell the patient that you already have preoperatively. I I cannot cure this. We can I can only do cataract. Beyond that, it's not going to help much. Maybe we can add some lubricants preoperatively and inform the patient that you are already having problems. These problems may persist after surgery. So depending upon the index, we can show this is your score. That, that keeps us very, very comfortable both psychologically, both for us and the patients. And TBIRT is a very good tool. Uh, in India, we are not doing TBIRT or shimmers routinely for cataract surgery unless we diagnose something in slit lamp. But in Western countries, all they regularly, every patient will have OSDA and shimmers and uh, TBIRT. And now digital T, but now the OCT-based uh, evaluation also comes. This is more quantification than just a subject to one. So we can even measure that in OCT and keep that as a value in every case. And this is very useful T uh, instead of T, but digital T, but where topography, we can see that T, but it's, a, it's I found in my practice it's a very nice tool where the might start breaking down and you can see the uh, corresponding map. It's very easy to teach uh, juniors about this. Then coming to the lid conditions, we have the um, blepharitis and uh, mebomonitis frequently missed. We saw sometimes you put a speculum, you see on the table, patient is having a lot of uh, blepharitis and mebomonitis. We don't know what to proceed, but generally we proceed with these conditions, then we have to be out of problems. So when you do all these tests, it looks like most of the patient, elderly patient, will have some amount of at least 60 to 70 percent either have a dry eye symptoms or dry eye disease in a preoperative evaluation. So, so those cases, even with the uneventful care tract surgery, you did a perfect surgery and the vision is very good and everything is fine, still the patient will be unsatisfied because of these symptoms and signs. The alleviation, the basic here is we cannot treat, uh, most of the times we cannot uh, treat the dye disease, only we are treating his symptoms that holds good in this like in a fever or a PU or something like that. So most of the times the diseases are very refracted to treatment and 80% of the times we cannot completely cure these diseases. And this comes to the uh, lubricants. These are um, uh, three varieties you have, the thicker ones, gel-like forms, and the thinner ones, and uh, spreads easily, and uh, you have a non-methyl cellulose-based ones. These are basically, I think, is three different varieties we have. The methyl cellulose has got a lot of properties on cellular metabolism, whereas the, uh, the other ones, uh, uh, they don't have the properties. That's the one a little bit different from both the things. So, but each one, it works well with one certain group of patients. You have a lot of tears and ocular surfaces. Problem is the thicker uh, ones will work a little better. And you have no tears and there is a lot of symptoms and there is a, then you have to use the thinner ones, not the thicker ones. Usually people reverse it. That's wrong. Um, so it comes to that, uh, the non-lubricating ocular surface. That is the reason. Why non-lubricating? It can be due to tears. It can be due to the ocular surface problem like pingy cula or entire congenital got damaged by prior uh, allergic conditions that we have to see it. 
Now, when it comes to the manifestations of visual fatigue, secretion, foreign body sensation, eyelid heaviness, dryness, uncomfortable eyes, these are all, these are all puts it basically into ocular discomfort syndrome, I call it as. They, they are not comfortable with their eyes, just like ocular discomfort, just like we are not very comfortable outside. We are very comfortable in air-conditioned room, but the world is not made air-conditioned. We evolved much before air conditions have come. So it's like that. It's, it's they're normal people, but they are not comfortable with their environment. They want a better environment because we evolved over a period of time. This is uh, supposed to be aggravated by cataract surgery. Not in all, around 20% of the patients. Patient says, I am almost all right before surgery because he never bothered about the eye, he's only bothered about the vision. Once the vision is solved, their attention is uh, to the, is that really true? That what we believe, or it is due to the steroids? Just my, as far as my opinion goes, this there's some drugs which are never useful in these conditions. I found this. I use extensively cyclosporine. I, I use a lot in my clinical practice. But this drug is not useful at all in post, post after cataract surgery. Most of the, it's completely useless in post cataract surgery patients. Coming to the punctum plugs. So this, never use them before surgery because punctum plugs and canal plus plugs, they increase the local uh, infection rate. There will be some amount of local infection going on, canal plus once you put them on, almost 50% of the patient. So you are taking a great risk by putting a punctum plug or canal plus plugs before surgery. If you want to do that, if you want to block to do dry, real dry, do it after one week when you are very much sure the, the everything is fine. So what you do when the, the other condition is which we miss is congenital calluses, which is a very, very simple condition. Preoperatively, we can easily analyze. And on the table during cataract surgery, we can manage this by cutting off all the things, but it produces a very red eye that we have to inform our patients. So this, this type of ocular surface, you cannot expect a, a patient without dry eye symptoms postoperatively. We just do a clear corneal surgery and finish. But this surface definitely it needs uh, some Top top treatment if they want a comfortable eye postoperatively with excision and EMG grafting or excision and just a gluing of the one. And if you see the lid, effort the lid and see this type of uh, uh, hyperemic and the toxic, uh, I call it as a toxic uh, reaction of local, this is mainly to the preservatives, then you have to seriously think about changing entire thing what you are giving postoperatively to make it a comfortable eye. Then coming back to the real serious disease. We have rheumatoid arthritis, Jogren's, and uh, AJ syndrome, OCP, and idiopathic. These are real dry eye cases where there is a Schumer's value. Based on Schumer's value, I manage my treatment. If my value is uh, around 5 to G O, um, between 0 and uh, uh, around 5, then I cauterize the lower punctum. This is, I do it 15 days before surgery. There will be some even you cauterize um, the or two days, three days before, there will be some amount of inflammation and discharge will be accumulated. So I do 15 days before surgery, put them on mild antibiotics and uh, then take it up after a, uh, two weeks. If my value is zero, most of the times I punctures both. This is what uh, I'm about to show you, the, the punctum plugs. You can use a cat gut, you can use a collagen plug or anything, or you can use a synthetic plugs. Uh, mostly I use a biological one, synthetic ones, it produces more infection because they are silicon based ones. This I do after two weeks, I don't do it uh, after one week, 10 days after surgery, I don't do it before because they are likely to increase the uh, infection rate. So postoperatively if you look at the dry eye, you have this uh, undiagnosed dry eye and treated especially with uh, the quinolones, you have a cornea with a mild SPK like picture, this is, uh, this is actually uh, keratopathy, squamous metaplasia of the cal uh, epithelium produces uh, this type of uh, uh, dry surface which cannot attract mucus. The once it once it goes cramps metaplasia, it does not stick the mucus. Then the tears won't stay on that. And that's the main reason. These cases they do very well with that. And first thing is you have to say the intraoperative pack factor because we don't put a pad nowadays. We just put a surgery and leave it and send them. But these cases they need a pad for at least six hours. Aqueous deficiency. Otherwise you get a delen. The delen will never get cured and you have a lot of problems. Go keep on going once it. So these patients, I rec strongly recommend you put a six hours pad in a dry eye preoperatively diagnosed cases. Uh, thank you very much. So for a person who has performed more than uh, 44,000 cataract surgeries and impressive 3,000 plus corneal transplants, including, uh, and uh, 
we all know that he's a very, very practical, very innovative person and he's done a lot of genuine work on uh, ocular surface, especially in cataract surgery in dry eyes. That is a very nice talk, uh, Dr. Jekereddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.